What's going on everyone? Thanks for clicking on the video and today we're gonna be counting down the top five upcoming Nintendo Switch games of August 2017. Starting at the top of the list at number five, we have Cinemora X. At a glance, you can probably tell right away that Cinemora X is a beautiful game. It's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, but with a pretty sweet twist. Instead of lives or a health bar, time is your main lifeline. If you've ever played the Prince of Persia or Burnout series, then you probably know what I'm talking about. But that's certainly no easy button, because this game can definitely get pretty intense. Cinemora X offers a story mode that hosts a cast of hardcore animal fighter pilots that would even make Fox and his crew blush. There are over 50 combinations with time manipulation devices that you can mix and match throughout the game's seven main story missions. But that's not all. You can also play through the entire story mode in co-op with split Joy-Con. Or you can play the all-new versus mode for even more multiplayer fun. Which, I mean, come on, let's be honest here. The Switch makes for some pretty great couch co-op play, and Cinemora X looks like it's gonna be the perfect type of game for just that. However, if you just want to jump in and get your quick fix for a quick game, there's also an arcade mode that provides some pretty satisfying challenges for fans of the shooter genre. Up next at number 4 we have Retro City Rampage. So it's been about 5 years since we've seen the original release of Retro City Rampage, and 3 years since we've seen the release of DX, but now we have Retro City Rampage officially hitting the Switch, of course in its DX version. And for those of you unfamiliar with the game's story and sort of hook, well, let me give you a little rundown. Retro City Rampage DX is essentially a demastered version of Saints Row, and I know that a lot of people have been comparing it to GTA, but honestly this game is hilarious and totally out there, so I find it way more like Saints Row. Not to mention, it's filled with some of the best callbacks to the 80s and 90s that I've ever seen in any video game. I mean, throughout the entire game you're essentially working for Doc from Back to the Future in the game's main story mode and you end up fighting something that looks almost exactly like Robocop in the third mission. But there are a ton of awesome little retro nods like that throughout the entire game. It's another game that's perfect for some on-the-go, quick-fix action. And that's really what this game is all about when it comes down to it. It's about just jumping in for a quick mission or two and then just jumping right out. So if you are interested in checking this one out for yourself, you can grab it on the eShop right now for $14.99. Moving on down the list to number three, we have Phantom Trigger. Phantom Trigger is a hardcore neon slasher with RPG elements, and if you ask me, 99% of the time a game has some RPG elements in it, well that's usually a really good thing. Phantom Trigger is no different. It comes from Tiny Build Studios, the same guys who brought us games like Dungeon Lot, Hello Neighbor, and even the Switch's own Mr. Shifty. The first thing you're going to notice when you see Phantom Trigger is its gorgeous art style. It's pixel art, but done in a very stylish way. If you've ever played games like Enter the Gungeon or Transistor, well then you're going to feel right at home with this. You play as Stan, a white collar middle class worker living an ordinary life that gets completely disrupted by a mysterious event. This definitely isn't your typical mindless sci-fi slasher with a tacked on story. The actual narrative in Phantom Trigger looks to be really interesting, and it explores some real world issues that you don't find in many video games. Not to mention, the game has four different endings, and the one you get depends on how you choose to play the game. But beyond a good story, a good game needs good gameplay, right? The main gameplay mechanic in Phantom Trigger is of course the combat, which actually looks to be pretty deep. Focusing on unlocking combos and upgrading weapons, that's where the RPG elements come in. Beyond that, Phantom Trigger promises to feature over 7 hours of gameplay and 5 very distinct worlds to explore. I've always been a pretty big fan of pixel art graphics and fast paced gameplay, so I'm pretty excited to check out Phantom Trigger once it releases later this month. Which by the way, if you're interested in checking it out right now, there's actually a free demo available on Steam, which I highly do recommend you go and download before you grab the Switch version just to see if you're gonna like it. Next up on the list at number 2 we have Sonic Mania. Alright, so I know that a lot of you might be thinking that Sonic Mania looks pretty indistinguishable from the original four Sonic titles that were released during the Sega Genesis era. However, this isn't your typical retro Sonic game. This is a game that's essentially 30 years in the making. And what I mean by that is that it's being developed by a team of developers who literally grew up playing Sonic games. So suffice it to say, a lot of love and care went into this game. But what is Sonic Mania? Well, in all honesty, when I first heard about it, I thought it was just a mega collection of the original Sonic games. But oh, was I wrong. 
It's essentially a brand new Sonic game, but remains largely inspired by the original Sonic the Hedgehog games released for the Sega Genesis, and it features the same 2D graphics as well as a remastered version of stages from previous games alongside a bunch of new stages. And if you're a fan of speedruns, or you just like to beat your own high scores, well then you're definitely going to appreciate the new Time Attack mode. It works exactly like you think it sounds, repeating levels and trying to beat your highest score, except they added a reset button. So if you mess up, you can instantly just reset the level with the press of a button. And a really nice touch is that the load times are almost instantaneous and the music doesn't reset every single time you reset the level, which is probably going to make it feel like you're going just a little bit less crazy on your 7,000th attempt. And finally, number one on the list is Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Alright, I know that most of you guys knew this was going to be number one this month, but how could it not be? Seriously, I mean, there's basically a new Mario game coming out on the Switch this month. However, this isn't your typical Mario game, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know as well. Kingdom Battle, down to its core, is a tactics-based RPG that features combat that's very similar to games like Final Fantasy Tactics, The Banner Saga, and XCOM. So if you've ever played any of those games before, you'll probably be able to get into this one pretty easily. That is, of course, if you can get past the whole Rabbids tie-in with the game, which I know also is something that people weren't too happy about. But after getting a couple hours of hands-on time with it myself, I can safely say that I'm really excited about this game. First of all, Kingdom Battle is beautiful. Don't let the colorful art style and humorous tone fool you, it can actually get pretty difficult, and it features a bunch of abilities that you would find in a lot of your other favorite strategy games. Movement is key, and choosing which abilities to string together is even more important. Yup, you can chain attacks in this game, which looks and feels really awesome when you pull it off. Each character has their own skill tree in which you can invest your XP in to get more abilities and unlock new weapons, which all have their own added effects such as area damage and status ailments. And that's really cool because it forces you to both plan ahead and strategize during combat. There's also a local co-op mode that lets you play the game with your friends, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to have tons of fun strategizing crazy attacks trying to take back the kingdom together. So there's there's quite a bit of depth in Kingdom Battle, and I could go on about this game for a very long time, so I'll probably end up doing a few videos about it as we get closer to release. So those are my top 5 upcoming Nintendo Switch games for the month of August, but I want to hear what games you guys are excited about that are releasing this month. Do you think I missed any games on my list? Join me in the comments below and let me know. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like it and subscribe for more Switch videos just like this one. Thanks, and have a great day.